Hi everyone. Um, today's video is in response to a comment um, left by Shell7412. She said, I would be interested in seeing how you made the journal itself. How many pages did you put in each signature? It appears that the book is bound with ribbons. How did you bind the signatures together? This was a response to journal flip three. This is the journal um, in that video. So I will show you what I did to bind it. Um, it's, it is two book boards and these, I made straps that go across the back. These are like heavyweight chipboard, like the back of a really heavy sketch pad or tablet. I think this was for, um, what was it for? drawing paper I believe a big sheet of drawing paper and I just used some of that similar kind of chipboard to put across here as straps when you look at the signatures inside you can kinda see here where the straps go and there's a space in between each one when I put the signatures together I just held them like this and I poked a hole going straight through on either side of these straps then I took this twine see if you can see this there's the ends it's just this um, black twine and white twine I had some of each it's like hmm, waxed some kind of waxed cord um, I when I put got the signatures um, let's see when I got the signatures all ready I punched through all of the layers at once so that they would go out right here then I put the cord in went through the signature and went out and I did that in all three places on each signature then on the back I stood the cover up like this with the signatures inside and I pulled each one of the cords up through and tied it in a secure knot on some of the cords that went through I put beads on them before I tied the knot and some of the strings because there's there are strings little loose strings here where they're tied between each you know signature because these cords all come up in one place between those signatures and they each come up here in that signature they don't lace down and come back they just all come up through and you tie them all in knots all the way across so some of these I left the cords you know where I tied it this is one end this end I left long put beads and a charm on it the ribbons I just tied around the cords in different places so the ribbons are not actually part of the binding of what's holding it together they're just decorative there is a really good video um, or two videos by Jenny Belly called how to how to make an art journal using recycled greeting cards tutorial part one and two and I will try to put the links in the down bar so you can go and check out her videos because she shows it from start to finish and she does a really good job of it so you know you should really check out her site to learn how to do that I she uses one strap and she has a smaller journal but I knew that when I wanted to use that kind of binding on this journal so I chose to make three straps to make it extra sturdy because these are really long pages they measure 14 and a half this way by five and a quarter this way and um, there are four sheets of paper to each signature so I think this signature is like about this big right around in there and I have three signatures in the in the book these are the pages before they've been gessoed or have anything done on them um, I'll turn them this way. You probably can see it better this way. Get it all in frame. I just gessoed over these pages, you know, like this. Um, I used more than one coat on a page. If I really didn't want to have anything showing through, if I was using a dark color, I just put one layer. Um, I already did a journal flip of this journal, but I can tell you a little bit about it. Um, the cover was covered in book pages both sides the whole thing before I put the signatures in and then I just did a whitewash of gesso on there then I put um, some um, like a glaze of um, a lighter brown to just kind of give it that old look and then I did some stamping and put you know tags on with a 
saying that I really like. Then I coated it a couple times with polycrylic and these, this the red areas here, you can see a little closer, those were actually brown stays on and the polycrylic reacted with just the brown stays on and turned all those kind of a blood red, which is really pretty, but definitely not what I expected. And the back is just stamped and covered with the polycrylic as well. The insides are just have a whitewash of gesso for right now. I'll probably do something with them um, when I get the book done, but they take, you can see, they take up a lot of abuse and get a lot of stuff on the edges as I'm working. So I usually don't even do the cover first if it's in a regular sketchbook like I'll show you. like this one that I flipped through I did a flip through for you before um, these I don't even bother doing the cover usually because I get so much paint and crap all over that it I mean you can just see it's just filthy and if had I already decorated that it would have been completely destroyed So this one, we'll wait until it's done. So Shell, uh, was it 7412, yeah, Shell 7412 also asked um, to see what, you know, kind of the, she liked the one journal flip I did that showed kind of the process that I used or told a little bit about each page and what I did so I will do a quick run through of this journal since I'm on this one and let you know so I use off-white in the background over the tech over the gesso that I did on this page um, I ran a piece of heavier plastic like packaging type plastic so it's nice and stiff I ran it through my big kick um, cutting out these flowers and I think these are part of the tattered florals for Tim Holtz So I ended up with the punch out which is a mask and the actual stencil itself So I used the mask in a few places on here I just had a little sticky in the center stuck it down, you know sprayed and wiped over it and Picked those up and then I did the stenciling using the other half on this um, I found this picture in a magazine of this girl and she has this really pretty pink froofy dress but the page ended just like right there and I wanted it to be big so I went over her bodice and the dress with some um, pinks and off-whites and these wings are from a stamp set that I just stamped and cut out and some little bling on her crown there this one is just pink um, paint over white gesso just it's just scraped on mixed with a little white here and there these are um, a plastic canvas like you'd use for like needlepoint or cross stitch that you know they're they have the kind of the bigger holes like you'd use for yarn well I found some at a garage sale so I dumped the thing the plastic piece in paint and then put it on here and that's how I got these really cool um, patterns for that. And these are um, an alphabet set. This one started out with lots of magazine images. Most of them were um, thread. It had ones that had like lots of embroidery thread and then I just picked some that had some really good colors that I liked and I just glued those down to start with and then there is a lot of washes over this. There's purples and blue violets and red violet and um, just just layered on several times over each color and then wiped back some and then another layer and wipe it back some these are all these circles are from magazine pages that are cut out that I really like the colors of so this one is kind of like cells this one's chain link there's some water and just put on there in a way that I like and these are Tazo tea bag tags. Love those. They show up in my journals every so often. This one is just a magazine cutout of a whole stack of fabrics, kind of laid out in a little bit of a rainbow effect there. These um, gears here, these are all from a die set, a wafer thin die set. And underneath is a napkin that had been used to wipe up my spills, you know, inks and paints. 
and I put it down with Mod Podge and then did a layer over that, a little inking around the edges. This is just glued on and inked around the edges. I put some drips of um, Glimmer Mist and let them drip down. This one was gesso. This page was gessoed a couple of times. Then uh, I used Distress Stains for the background. I think this is Blue Sapphire and I'm not sure what the other one was. It kind of mixes in. And I kind of did some splats here and there and some spritzes and then I used a straw to blow them. The black part is India ink and I just used a straw and just went to blow the ink. So I put a goodly size you know, a few drops of ink and just blew them around the page. It makes a really nifty design. But the whole page is started with these two shapes here. And I just love those shapes. I cut them out of book pages and was kind of moving them around on the page. And they, it just grew around that. All the stuff that's there just kind of grew around that. Got some washi tapes. And it has a quote that I really like on it. It says, marriage, love, honor, and negotiate totally that's you have to love honor and negotiate <laughs> this one's just pretty simple it just was gessoed with um, a darker purple over it and then some light purple I believe that's glimmer mist but I'm not sure and the the, the lighter purple circles are actually um, a resist I stamped those in medium because um, I have a stamp that has the two circles and then it has two filled in circles on the other side and I cut them to go together like that. So the light purple ones are in a resist. The dark purple went over the top of that and then the black circles with the white inside of them went on top of that. This one started out as somewhat kind of a resist as well. I used the another circle stamp that I made to put down um, over the yellow that was on top of the gesso. So I gessoed it and put yellow on top. Then I stamped in medium to create a resist, put over the green. And everywhere that I put the medium, the, the green stain wiped back up off of because I used a distress stain over the top. The dress and her and her hair and everything are all cut out of book pages. This, I believe, is cut out of cardstock, actually. And I just used, um, I think, Neo Color to watercolor crayons to color that in and to do the shading on her. And her boots are also cut out. I put glossy accents on her hair, and you probably aren't going to be able to see it very good, but maybe. So she has glossy accents and a few streaks on her hair, this part, and all the little black polka dots, and her red shoes. Um, the reason it looks like it's black glossy accents is because I just went over where I had stamped in black and where I colored this in black. It turned out really nifty. This one is a cut out from one of my scrapbooking papers that I really liked and a paper doily here. These are stamped doilies. I have stamps that do these and I just cut them out and they look, you know, about as good as that. You just can't see through them. This is book pages that I cut out and put around it. I ended up painting them to match this. And this part is tissue tape from, I believe, Tim Holtz. And the back green paper I uh, put down before I put the other papers down. So you can kind of see how it all ends up coordinating. This is probably one of my favorite pages. Even though it's so simple, this stamp, this flower, is just a line stamp. And I put... I just took my brush and did strokes of pink all the way around so that, you know, I'd have a big pink background to stamp on. Stamped the flower stamp down and I added some highlights with a white gel pen. These swirlies I just did in, um, guessing, I'm thinking I did those with Distress Stain because of the way that they are kind of modeled looking. I'm guessing Bundled Sage or maybe, maybe Crushed Olive. So that page is fairly simple. I just had gessoed it and put this bright pinky green colors on there. Did the flowers right on top. These pages aren't done. This is a piece of lace that my great aunt Alice crocheted. I believe that was her. And it has been kind of got passed down, you know. And I really love the piece of lace, but it really is only about this long. So there's really not a lot, you know, you could put it on. I suppose on a page, but I chose to 
brush paint onto it and stamp it on this page and use it as like a giant stamp and a stencil because I think I'll get a lot of really good use out of it and I will really love it and see it throughout my work and I think that I will really get some good appreciation out of that rather than having it tucked away or you know in one spot will I never see it again this page gessoed first I had to gesso all these pages because it's that glossy um, like coffee table book paper and it's it's fairly decent paper it's fairly stout but it is shiny so you know, I gotta have some gesso for some grip there and this one I did the flowers first I just did some circles with watercolor crayons and blended them a little bit painted in the background with um, one of the turquoises that I really like did a little doodling over it with um, I think that is just plain regular Crayola super tip markers I mean they're just you get them for cheap and then blended here more a little bit with water I put a tag on there's some gears stamped in the background I don't know if you can really see them anywhere here and some washi tape this girl I cut out her dress and once I figured out how big she was going to be, I cut out her dress and pasted it on her. It's embossed paper, has lots of little dots, and I just drew the rest of her in. This is actually stamped in pink paint. It's the crown from the top of a door hanger, like a princess door hanger that's craft foam that I got at the Dollar Tree, and so I just stamped that on there, added a few bits of washi tape and some more ink that I dropped on there in blue. And these are the glimmer mists that I have. I only have two. I have the green and the purple, so I wouldn't mind having some more at some point, but it hasn't been at the top of my priority list. So there's just some stamping in the background. The paint, when I put it on, I used a credit card and just scraped it on with a different pink and, and light green and blue. So that's how I got the background. I went around her legs with um, some charcoal and rubbed it in. This one was just the scrapbook pages that you see in music pages. They were all sort of in blues and greens except for the book pages. Put those down, layer a Mod Podge over the top. I used hot glue to make these little swirly kind of branches on there. Then I sprayed with um, an acrylic spray that I mixed up myself. Let it kind of pool to the edges of all the hot glue and kind of, you know, let it run a little bit. Dried it really good. Then I wiped off the top of the hot glue and that doesn't really disturb what's underneath because it's acrylic. So you kind of get back to the color that was underneath it. It leaves a really nifty thing. This is photo paper that I stamped on with a background stamp that leaves leaves all the white parts so the red parts all turned the color that I dipped the smushed the ink in these are just tags that I have a die for and I cut out and I put glossy accents on the top of all of these and they're kind of dull right at the moment probably from being waxed so and I just put little holes and hung them from there and stuck them down on foam this one I did the same thing um, as this page. I used the hot glue and the page was kind of yellows and greens underneath. So when I put the hot glue on and let it dry, then when I put these other colors on top, I used like an orange spray and a red spray. And then there's a little bit of touches of purple kind of in there. So when that dried, then you still get the little yellow veins and this one just kind of looks like someone without their skin so that I'm gonna do something with because you know I don't mind a little bit of odd or creepy or morbid but that just is scary looking so don't do that this page I just smeared down blue and green paint these two are from a project that I did with that same background stamp that left the flowers and I just tore out pieces of those these are little um, what do you call that stuff polymer clay that I put in to a mold I had and just made the faces and just kind of painted them and you know put the paint on and then kind of rubbed it off to give it you know you can see the details a little bit better. This is cheesecloth. I just put medium down, put the cheesecloth in, kind of did this. And I didn't even go back over the top. You can still feel it and it's still a little bit loose. It turned out really cool. 
this page, another cutout from a piece of scrapbook paper I liked, stamped, stamped a sentiment, just kind of matted it on a couple of places. Underneath is torn pieces of a map put down, and then there's... Uh, several layers of glazes of browns and like an old blue that's about this color to just give it a really neat background for it to go under and this is washi tape this music and I don't know who makes it because it's not in the package anymore but it's really fun this one this whole page this whole page started with this piece of dark brown lace here which was actually um, kind of a white off-white and I thought, man, that looks like a picket fence. I'm going to try that out. So I put it on there and I inked it really good with stays on. And it made a cool wrought iron looking, you know, wrought iron fence kind of look to it. So I had to have some bird houses. I wanted poppies to be on the other side of my fence. So poppies. And then I downloaded, this is a clip art thing I downloaded and just printed it different sizes, colored in with a little bit of watercolor crayon. This is also lace that I inked with brown stays on so they have their little picket fence or whatever the little wrought iron fence on each of their houses. And I love poppies. Poppies are one of my favorites. So that was really fun um, to make. And these are just um, a little swirly paper clip and I put just fed washi tape through and then put the pieces together and then you know just cut a little notch and I put a couple on each one and I saw that somebody do that on I saw a video that somebody did of that and I thought that was a really good idea so and it says the poppies are always pinker on the other side of the fence then just a page ready for next time these are the pages I have yet to go a lot of them I have three signatures in here I originally had six but the spine was way too narrow. I mean, this look at how fat this already is, and that's only one signature finished. So I may end up having to take out one more signature to make this work. But if you have any questions, let me know. Um, check out Jenny Billy, Jenny Billy, Jenny Belly's um, site. It's just Jenny Belly. Check her out on YouTube and look at her tutorial on how to do this kind of binding. I'll try to put the link in the down bar. Thanks. Bye.